people and uh, it goes along with the message tonight so thank you Jesus <laughs> praise God so uh, I guess pastor is he going to uh, he's his, gone. the brother's funeral he's already there the oh, funeral's he... Saturday okay but he's already up here he's going to come home as soon as the funeral's over oh okay, okay. we have John Hall here Sunday oh that's right and pastor will be back for that all right I'm, I'm going to sing a song to y'all that's okay Some people say, no, nah, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Limit yourself. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, that's what he always has to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My transgressions and that he paid that price a long, long time ago and that he gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary with something else I have want to know do you still feel the nails every time I fail? Does he hear the crowd cry crucify again? Am I causing him pain? Then I know I've got to change. I just can't bear hurting him. It seems I'm so good at breaking hell that I treat his precious grace so carelessly. But each time he forgives what if he relives the agony he felt on that tree? Does he still feel the pain every time I fail? Does he hear the crowd cry crucified again? And I know I've got to change. I just can't bear the thought of a hurting him.
everything God gives. Oh, all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want to go ahead and hand this out to you now uh, so that I don't have to do it later. Yeah. Thank you. They used to call that the class monitor when they would get to pass out papers. <laughs> and, and dust the erasers, right? Yeah, and dust the erasers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember that. Teacher's pet. If you're below 40. Yeah, I was the teacher's pet. <laughs> the only problem was when I dusted the erasers, my big nose sucked it all up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, <clears throat> I'm thankful for God. Amen. Amen. Thankful for the Holy Spirit. Thankful for Jesus. Praise God. You know, he didn't have to do what he did. And thank God he did. Amen. Amen. Those beautiful songs that <clears throat> sister was singing uh, about the glory of God and Jehovah is his name. And, <coughs> and uh, you know, we need to look at God and, and realize he is a holy God. Amen. Oh, yeah. And our life is to uh, should be to glorify God. Amen? Uh, so we need to live a life to glorify God. Who wants to glorify God in here? Amen? Amen? I want to glorify God. I want to glorify Him in every part of my life. And sometimes we, we uh, get away from that and, and we're not thinking about the glory of the Lord or, or is this going to please God or not? Uh, Sometimes we don't think about those things. Is this pleasing to God? And and uh, and we need to we need to do that. We need to have that mindset. We need to be God inside minded. That God is inside of us, but not just God inside minded. But He's the create uh, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of honor and glory and everything that we can give to Him. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about those things tonight about. How we do that. So uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. <clears throat> Thank you Jesus. Well that lasagna sure smells good. <laughs> hey I, I got just to share a little bit with you. I got to eat some uh, nachos tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah and they good were so you. good. They were uh, these things called protein chips uh -huh. and uh and, you, and I, I got to put some meat on it and cheese and jalapeno. Were they good? Oh, it was awesome. It was like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it only had two carbs. <laughs> Praise God. So <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9. Be careful for nothing. That means don't be full of care. Amen. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We read this a few weeks ago. Uh, verse 7, And the peace of God, who needs some peace in their life, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. <clears throat> Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Who wants peace? Amen. Oh, yeah. We need we need to have, uh, there's a scripture that says uh, about peace with God and with man. And uh, that we, we want that <coughs> peace with God and with man. And, uh, and, and we need to obtain that peace. But the way we do that, this is saying how we do that. Uh, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, <laughs> lovely, and of a good report, think on these things. And if we think on those things, then we're going to have the peace of God. And the peace of God will rule. Amen? I need the peace of God to rule in my life. Amen. Glory to God. Because circumstances and things continue to arise. And uh, the enemy wants to get our focus on those things. But he wants us to turn to God first. Amen. Amen. There, there's a situation in the past couple of days and before we would uh, get a little uh, stirred up about it. and uh, But we just uh, said, not worried about it. And uh, and it, it turned around the second day. Praise Amen. God. And it, you know, and it could have gone on and on. And, but the more we stay stirred up, the more God's hands is taken off of it. 
Amen. The more we try to handle things and do it ourselves, God says, okay, go ahead. And, uh, and you know, and sometimes we're just doing that with our mouth or with our, with our conversation. Uh, we start trying, even though we're not trying to, uh, physically do something with our mouth where we're trying to take control of that situation. And God does not want that. Amen. He wants us to have that peace, but we got to think on those things that are true, honest, just, pure, loving, and a good report. If we do that, then we're not only going to have peace, but we're going to please God. Who wants to please God? Amen. 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 I want to please God. I tell you, uh, uh, we just need to think like that. There, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 16. And this is uh, uh, the uh, place where it says you better, uh, let's see, uh, Beatitudes. Amen. Be, everybody say Beatitudes. Uh, I be going to have a good attitude. <laughs> I'm going to have a good attitude. Uh, and I'm not going to allow the enemy to affect my attitude. Uh, so, uh, verse 1, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. That word meek also means gentleness of spirit or humble, humility. The, uh, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God wants us to be merciful. He wants us to have mercy. Amen. And, you know, uh, uh, sometimes people are happy when judgment comes upon someone. Right? Uh there's situations that are going on right now and uh, uh, judgment happening upon and they're just celebrating this mm -hmm. evil judge. It's an evil thing, mm -hmm. evil judgment. And uh, uh, it's of the devil, you know. Yeah, uh, and there's time, I mean, we're, we're supposed to, uh, there's laws of the land. We're supposed to abide by those laws. There's judgment and everything. But are we supposed to rejoice that uh, uh, someone fell into a trap and, and, uh, did something wrong maybe or didn't do something wrong and judgment comes upon them. Are we supposed to rejoice in that and be happy? Oh, yeah, get him, God. Get him, God. No, that's not how God wants it. Amen. We're supposed to have a merciful heart. Amen. A merciful heart. Now, that doesn't mean there's not judgment and it doesn't mean that there's not, uh, you know, recompense and things like that. But God is a God of mercy. Amen. I tell you what, uh, God has disciplined me in my lifetime. Has he disciplined you in your lifetime? And where you knew that it was God disciplining you? Uh, but do you think he was having mercy at the same time that he was disciplining you? Yes. Mm -hmm. God, all that. Much so. Yes. And, uh, you know, all the things that Israel went through over and over again, they would uh, walk in the things of God and, and do what uh, they're supposed to do. And then they would turn away from God and judgment would come upon them. And God would draw them back to himself. Uh, but that judgment, it turned them back towards God, right? So that in, in God's judgment, there's mercy, amen, because he, he wants his people to come back to him. So sometimes whenever I'm reaping the benefit, uh, not the benefits, the I'm reaping the uh, uh, result. result of my sin or, or my whatever, uh, then when I'm, that's happening to me, it turns my face back towards God because I love God and he knows that I love him. Amen. So when that uh, judgment and that uh, work is going on in me, it turns me back to God. So that's merciful. But we're not supposed to rejoice in somebody being brought down. Do y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. <laughs> Who's hungry for God? Who's thirsty for God? Thirsty for the ways of the spirit. Amen. I am thirsty for God, uh, hungry for God. And when we find ourselves where we're not hungry for God and we're not being, we're not thirsty for God, then what's happening is, is we're starting to uh, draw back and uh, uh, God doesn't want that. He wants you to step towards him. He says, if you, I, I will draw nigh 
uh, uh, he'll draw nigh to us. Amen. We draw near to him. He's going to draw near to us. Uh, so sometimes we don't know how to do that, it, especially it's been a while since we've been, you know, seeking God like we're supposed to. But if you just make that one step towards God, he's going to uh, bring you forward. Amen. So we don't want to uh, step back and not uh, get to that place where we don't <coughs> hunger and thirst after God. Blessed are the, are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I want to be a peacemaker. Dad Gummit. Dad Gummit, I'm going to be a peacemaker. <laughs> Can you say Dad Gummit? Is that a, that's not a curse word, is it? No. no. What about Dad Blame It? No. <laughs> I better be careful. I might say something I'm not supposed to. <laughs> uh, but... Blessed are the peacemakers. Praise God. In, the, in all the years uh, serving God and in the church and things like that, there's people that have been mad at this person or been mad at the pastor or been mad at me. Well, nobody's ever been mad at me. Right, honey? <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. You just hadn't heard about it yet, brother. <laughs> Uh, but you know, uh, and and what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to pile onto that and add to that? No. What we're supposed to do, uh, that's one of the things that that God's helped helped us to do is to be peacemakers. And and uh, you know, our pastor, he's not perfect. You know, uh, does anybody well, think he's was. perfect? <laughs> he's not a perfect man, and he'll be the first one to tell you. And uh, and he has. You know, the, the flesh that he deals with, just like every single one of us. And that's why we cannot judge him, We're, that we can't uh, sit in judgment against our pastor. Amen? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but the thing is, is we don't need to be, pile on to that. You know, whether it be our pastor, our brother, our sister, because that stirs up. It stirs up that strife. We need to be peacemakers. Amen? Right. And, and whenever somebody has something against someone else, let's pray about it instead of talk about it. Amen. Some some people, uh, uh, you know. Well, I need to let you know what I what we need to pray about. No, let's just pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's just pray for our pastor and uh, or pray for uh, pastor. Hadn't done nothing, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> talking about pastor. Uh, uh, let's just pray for our pastor. Pray. Let's say Dorleen. She. Uh, we're gonna pray for Dorleen. She's. Uh, you know. Uh, Lord, help her not to be so ornery. And. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Help her God. And, and Lord, change Nancy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> but no, let, let's pray the word over each other. Amen. Let's pray the word. And there's a, a prayer that we're, I'm going to read later on. That's something we can pray. And it's the word of God that you can pray for that person. And it's not going to have any of your opinion in it. Amen. And uh, so we need to pray the word of God. Pray by the spirit of God. You know, the Holy Ghost is there for you. And uh, uh, and when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's a perfect prayer. When, using your prayer language, it's a perfect prayer that the enemy can't get in the middle of. Amen. And it's it's uh, your spirit praying by the Spirit of God, a perfect prayer to God. And guess what's going to happen when that kind of prayer is prayed? Yeah. Amen. It's going to be answered. <laughs> So whenever there's someone you're, that you're dealing with and, and you're having emotions and things going on in the inside of you, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray the Word and don't pray your opinion. Amen? So blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This, all this I'm telling you here, this is how we're going to please God, to glorify God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs, shall be, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men <clears throat> shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. Everybody say I'm salt. Oh. Amen. You are the salt of the earth. But if you shall... Uh, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is uh, thenceforth, thenceforth good to be cast out and to be trapped underfoot. Salty. Uh, not, not salty, but salty in a good way. <laughs> I'm going to be salty for Jesus. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. The light on the inside of you cannot be hid. 
And uh, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify. Everybody say glorify. By your Father, which is in heaven. Who wants to glorify the Father, which is in heaven? That's what Jesus came to do. Amen. And we're to follow the example of Jesus and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And th this, uh, all of these Beatitudes here, these are ways you glorify your Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> And uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. <clears throat> Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Y'all know this. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Amen. I'm going to read that again. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So your mind, your will, your emotions, your, your spirit to love God. That's what we're called to do. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. So I love you and uh, I love you as much as I love myself. That's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that's hard, especially when that person is kind of unlovable. <laughs> and uh, a little, uh, huh? What were you saying, huh? I said, boy, is it. Oh, yeah. She said, boy, okay. are you. I thought you were saying something about me. <laughs> so sometimes when they're, you know, they're uh, a little unlovable. And sometimes oh, no. there, there's a person that used to be in our church that everybody just couldn't stand that person. And it wasn't me. <laughs> they couldn't stand that person. And uh, this person attacked Kathy uh, early on in our uh, things in, in God and everything and attacked her and, you know, and, and it was real hard. Uh, you know, we, we had only been married a few years or whatever and, and uh, you know, maybe a year or two or something like that. And, uh, I wouldn't have any of it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, but God told us to love that person out of that attitude. And uh, anyway, we started loving them when they we'd walk up to them and they, you know, and they're talking to everybody else. And and then we walk up and they turn around and leave. And or uh, we walk up to hug them and they, you know, shrug, you know, go the other direction. And you know, we just kept doing that and kept doing that and kept doing that. Until finally, they they gave us a hug and they loved on us, and uh, God changed their whole. Uh, they became some of our best friends in, uh, in the body of Christ, and still to this day are. Amen. And uh, uh, but we're supposed to love people out of that, Amen, Amen. and not uh, you know turn our face away from them, even though they're acting a way they shouldn't be acting, <laughs> and uh, and sometimes. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, people in the church or it might be people at your job. Honey, how many times uh, uh, in, in our working in the grocery stores, there's uh, grocery managers that uh, have a God complex. <laughs> and uh, you, you've worked in those stores before, haven't you, brother? And, uh, I mean, they, they float in and they tell everybody what to do and float out. And uh, <laughs> or get fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doctor, same way, huh? But they, you know, they they got a little bit of power and they throw it around like, you know, you know, and, and make you know that you are less than them. And uh, but there's been a few like that, or, or receivers in the back room. Oh man, uh, receivers in the back room. And uh, anyway, but God has called us to love those people. And and there's still people that uh, one of them ran into Kathy that hadn't seen him in years. And ran into Kathy the other day, gave her a big hug, and and uh, you know was uh, said we missed you. And there was a guy in the in Kroger's and Clute. Well, man, anyway, it, it was one of the <laughs> anyway there was one of the managers, and he was you know like that, and was just gave us fits and everything. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, we stopped working for the chips in that area, but uh, 
Kathy came in in there and she, he started praying for her in the middle of the store and uh, uh, and just you know said we miss you and you know and all that and and uh, so all of that sowing that seed of love even though they were ornery as all get out <laughs> and and even mean. Uh, Showing that love against all that. Now, I'm not saying you have to be walked over. You know, we we don't have to allow people to walk on us and you know and and uh, be a doormat. You know, we don't have to allow that. Amen. But at the same time, uh, you can still be loving and uh, and not allow that. Amen. And uh, so there has to be a balance. But that comes with the Holy Spirit uh, on how to how to handle that person, how to talk to that person. Uh, one of the one of the ways that that uh, that happens is is we'll, we'll be uh, they'll say something about something going on in their life and we, we pray for them and say we're going to be praying for you we're going to be praying for you and then they'll say then we'll get grab a hold of their hand let's pray about it now you know over a period of time and what happens is is they become some of the our best friends in the world so uh, the thing is is uh, loving those people uh, even though. Uh, and love them uh, as, as yourself. Amen. So on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Now, we're, uh, first, I want to say we're not always perfect in that, but, uh, but we've got grace. Amen. To help in time of need, to help us when we need to love that way. <clears throat> uh, so on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. So if you're loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you're loving your neighbor <clears throat> as yourself, What's happening is, is you're fulfilling all of the rest of the law. All of the rest of the law. The, the Ten Commandments, all the, all the law. Not, not talking about all the ones that man added on. No. I'm talking about the, the, the law of God. Amen. When you are fulfilling these two laws, then you are fulfilling all of those. Amen. Because if you're loving God, uh, you're not putting any other God before you. Amen. And, and so forth, you know, and you're not stealing because you love your brother uh, as much as you love yourself. You're not going to go and steal and cut it and all those things. Uh, I think it's the first four commandments are uh, commandments that are toward our relationship with God. And the other commandments are for, uh, towards our relationship with man, other men uh, and man. So God wants us to, you know... Uh, Love each other. Amen. Love each other. That's how we're going to glorify God is by loving one another. When I come in, I get a hug. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> hugs my neck. <laughs> you know, when we start loving on each other, uh, God, I mean, he's saying, look at my children. They love one another. And we really do in this church. Do y'all believe that? We believe, we love one another, and uh, sometimes we don't see people for a long time, and uh, and when they come back, it's like they never left, and uh, uh, so it's it's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> so First Peter five, verse six through eleven. <clears throat> Who are you supposed to humble? Yourself. yourself. Amen. I'm not called to come along and humble Brother Ken. <laughs> Amen. Uh, humble are yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So God puts it in the way, humble yourselves, so that God doesn't have to come along and humble you. I mean, he's been humbled by God before. And But if we humble ourselves, Amen. That's the way it's supposed to, that's the order that it's supposed to be. Uh, so humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care. Everybody say, all your care. All your care. Praise God, all your care, whatever it is. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we, let's just pray this right now. We cast all of our care upon you right now, Jesus. Every bit of it. We cast, cast every bit of it on you, whether it be our children, whether it be our finances, whether it be our health, whatever it may be, God, we cast it all over on you, Lord God, because you care for us. We're not going to be careful, well, Lord God, or full of care. We're going to cast that care upon you. When that care start, begins to arise, we're going to cast it over on you in Jesus' name, for you care for us, God. 
You care for us, and we thank you for that. We thank you for ministering your grace to us, Lord God, and you help us in time of need. In Jesus' name. Y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. So verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. <clears throat> be Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> whom he may. He's a may. He's not, uh, everybody say, I'm not a whom he may. <laughs> Amen. I'm not a whom he may. He cannot uh, devour me. He cannot devour my children. He cannot devour my church. Amen. Uh, uh, be sober, be vigilant, but we need to be aware of the tactics of the devil. That's, that's one of the things we've been talking about this few weeks is being aware of the tactics of the devil. Are you saying something to me, Karen? Oh, she's looking at me. The other day she told me how wonderful of a pawpaw I was. <laughs> See, I, 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 I interpret it in the spirit. <laughs> Uh, but be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Everybody say steadfast in the faith. Praise God. We're supposed to resist him. When those thoughts and when those uh, feelings and emotions come up that are negative and that, that are planted there by uh, the stinking devil, then you resist it. Amen. You Amen. resist it. What was your scripture in Peter? 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're supposed to resist it. We're not supposed to let him walk over us. Have you all seen those old cartoons where they tie somebody up with rope and uh, they lay him on the train tracks and uh, they're just uh, uh, waiting for the train to come and, and uh, they're just saying, oh, no, oh, no, instead of trying to get out of it. And uh, anyway, we're not supposed to lay there. Well, yeah. You know, I'm going to hop off of that train track somehow <laughs> and, uh, and resist the devil. He cannot destroy me. He cannot destroy my family. Yeah, Amen. Right. Uh, I don't care what the, the doctor may say. I don't care what the uh, government may say. I don't care what the, the CDC says with all yeah. that's going on right yeah. now. Uh, you know, that's some serious stuff and we need to be praying, but that's not going to destroy me or my family or my loved ones. Amen. I, I believe it's going to be uh, cut off. Amen. The, the, so we need to pray against that and speak the word against that situation. But And resist. Everybody say resist. Don't just take it. Amen. Don't just take it. If somebody is, is uh, you know, telling you all kinds of stuff that is wrong and it's evil, don't just take it. Amen. Speak the truth. Speak the word of God. <clears throat> and I'm going to say this. I'm not going to say much, much more than this. But uh, one thing I love about our president uh, is that he doesn't just sit back and take it. No, he doesn't. And uh, uh, that's one of the things. And, and sometimes he handles it in the very wrong way. Yes, he does. But a lot of times he, he does. He's just standing up. And uh, that's one of the things I love about our president. And uh, there's other things that can be changed, and thank God, God's working on them. Amen. But we got, but but we don't. We got to resist the devil. Amen. Resist the devil. Resist the, the enemy. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Make you. Everybody say, make you perfect. Make you perfect. That word "perfect" there means complete. Uh, amen. Uh, so it makes you complete establishes you and strengthens you and settles you. Who wants to be settled? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes we need things to settle down. Amen. But God is the God that can work in your life to cause things to settle down. He can strengthen you. He can establish you. And he makes you complete and perfect. Do you believe that today? Amen. Amen. Because it's the God of all grace who has called unto us. Uh, Unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered a while. Makes you perfect. Established. Strengthened. And settles you. Verse 11 says to him. Be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How do you bring glory to God? By humbling yourself. How do you bring glory to God? By casting all of your care. You bring glory to God by being sober. And being vigilant. And resisting steadfast in the faith. Every time you do those things, it brings glory 
to God. It brings glory to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And uh, Jesus is, is uh, it pleases Jesus. Amen. It pleases God. And that's who I want to please. Amen. Uh, everybody else, uh, you know, if it doesn't please them, me acting this way, well, that's too bad. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> excuse me, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. So we're supposed to not just give, uh, first of all, we're born again. We accept Jesus in our lives. We give him, uh, give him our, our life. And uh, we have a, uh, a born again spirit. We're not just supposed to give him our soul and renew our mind. Not just that, but we're supposed to give him our bodies also. Do y'all believe that? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Your body, your body's not going to come in line unless you have a born again spirit. Your body's not going to come in line unless you renew your mind, and then your body comes in line. Can you uh, imagine you, you trying to be perfect in your body, and whenever you're uh, being uh, your mind is being bombarded by all this evil, then your, bo your body can't come in line. Uh, that's why uh, sometimes we uh, see people and we say, man, we want them to change. We want them to change. They got to turn it around. But until they have that born again experience, until their mind is renewed, we cannot expect their bodies exactly. to come in line exactly. and, then, and then to do right in their, in their physical life. Amen. Now, thank God some people just do uh, do right, uh, but they're, they're still far from God if they hadn't given their heart to God. And we, you can't force people uh, to do right. So one of the ways that I pray is, uh, is I pray for uh, these people, my children or, or relative or loved one or uh, a grocery manager in a grocery store. I, I pray that every uh, demon spirit that is working in their life, I bind it from operating. Amen. Bind it from operating in their life so that they're free <clears throat> then when that spirit is bound from operating. Now, they still need to be delivered from those things, yeah. <clears throat> but you bind it from operating in them so that they can uh, uh, hear what the spirit has to say. And hear uh, when uh, someone is put in their pathway to speak into their life so that they can receive it. Amen? So you bind that demon spirit, evil spirits, from operating in these people's lives. Amen? And uh, bind that from operating, and then they're free, and they can be born again, their soul can be renewed, their mind can be renewed, and then their body will come into line. They'll, they'll stop doing the things that they were doing before. Amen? But it's a process. Right? Were y'all all perfect uh, the first, uh, when you uh, stepped into the church house? <laughs> oh well, Lily was. Lily was perfect. Where's well, that halo? Yeah, yeah. Where's her halo? She's got one. It's built in. <laughs> but yeah, uh, when, you know, when I I came, got saved and everything. Yeah, you're born again spirit. That is the most important part. But I still had struggles in my mind. I still had struggles in my body, right? And 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 with things that I needed to change in my life. And there's still things I need to change now. Amen? But it's a process by renew, uh, renewing the mind and, and then those things in the body change. Amen? Amen. In your life change. So, uh, so pray for those people that the, those uh, spirits that are working against them be bound from operating. And, uh, and that God would open their spiritual ears and take the blinders off. Amen? Uh, and that's how we can pray for them. Okay, did I finish reading that? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Everybody say transformed. Transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you give glory to God? By doing these things, by renewing your mind, and you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can do that. Amen? Praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Y'all know this very well. Chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. If my people, who's a part of my, who's uh, in this room are my people? <laughs> 
are God's people. Yes. Amen. We are God's people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, humble themselves, humble themselves, yes. praise God, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my e mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Praise God. So we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. God will hear. Amen. God will hear us. Amen. And he will forgive us of our sin and he'll heal our land. Who wants God to do that? Oh, yeah. Amen. How many knows that this land, not, not just this land, it, it's a, a worldwide situation where the hate and all the junk is going on, God can heal our land. There's certain things got to happen for the coming of the Lord, to, for the Lord to return. Yes, we know that. But are we supposed to sit back and let the enemy just have his way? Be, no. Uh, no. We're supposed to resist the devil until the day he brings us home. Amen. Resist the devil. Resist what he's trying to do until the day he brings us home. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Humble yourself and pray and seek his face. You know, so many times God is just waiting for you, for me, to just seek his face. The situation and circumstance that's been uh, uh, running around uh, your life over and over and over. It seems to get better, then it gets worse, and then it gets better, and then it gets worse. And, and how many has dealt with situations like that before? And uh, sometimes God is just waiting for you to seek his face, amen, to, to cry out to him. Amen. Psalms 34 talks a lot about that. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Psalms 34. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Psalms 34, the whole thing. I can't read that much. Huh? I can't read that much. Well... <laughs> I've been praying for you. <laughs> okay. A Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. Everybody say all times. Oh. Praise God. Even when, even when things are going bad, they eat even the more when things are going bad. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all. Everybody say all. all. Uh, praise God. What happened first? I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. So many times we just got to get on our face and seek God. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and cried out to God, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all. Everybody say all. Aww. All of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. Praise God. You believe that angels are encamped around yes, about you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The, uh, our sister Sharon, uh, that's uh, had a, did she have, it's she this week? Friday. This yes, Friday, this Friday yeah, this Friday she's going to, there's angels yes. <laughs> that are encamped around about her. You can feel them. <laughs> amen, amen. And yes. uh, the doctors that are going to do their thing, uh, those hands are going to be controlled yes. by the Lord, amen. Yes. And uh, uh, I mean, there are angels encamped around about her uh, and, and Randall. Uh, so the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them, delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many believes the Lord is good? Amen. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. <clears throat> and uh, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. If there's something that's good for you, you're not going to want for it. God's going to have it there for you. You just got to receive it. Amen. Amen. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? 
Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. How do you, you want to glorify God? Listen to this scripture. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry. Everybody say the righteous cry. And the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So we need to, we need to be asking God for forgiveness. Many afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Everybody say all in this world. There's going to be th things that come against us, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. You believe that today? Amen. Praise God. God is good. Oh, <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. <clears throat> this is the prayer I was telling you about, that you can pray over people, over yourself, of course, but you pray and God will start releasing them and delivering them. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is a prayer. To be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God, I pray this for my sons. Lord God, that they be filled with the knowledge of God's will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That their spirit, I mean, my children were born again when they were four, uh, yeah. five years old. Uh, I baptized my children in the bathtub. <laughs> uh, they uh, uh, were baptized in the Holy Ghost with uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues. They, they lived that life. They mm -hmm. grew up in it. And God, they are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Worthy, O Lord, unto, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing, increasing, increasing in the knowledge of God, and strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Praise God. I'm praying for my brothers and my sisters. I'm praying that they're strengthened with all might, even the honorary brother and the honorary sister, uh, that God, uh, God strengthened them with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. When you feel darkness around you, when you feel feel uh, oppression around you. When you feel that oppression around you, uh, pray this scripture. God delivers us from the power of darkness. Amen. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. God has delivered us from the power of darkness. I pray that over people that are dealing with depression, you are delivered from the power of darkness. You are delivered from it. I say it right now in the name of Jesus. Those that I'm praying for right now that are dealing with depression. And uh, uh, in Jesus' name, you are delivered from the power of darkness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, I'm going to pray uh, by the Holy Ghost for a moment. And then we're going to read this prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Worship. We need you, God. We need you so much. We can't live this life on our own. We need you to live. We need you to breathe. We need you, Lord God, to help us to do what you've called us to do. I can't fulfill all these things on my own. I've got to have you. I've got to have you in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body of my being in Jesus name God I thank you that you are moving amongst your people right now Lord I thank you that you're drawing us nigh you're drawing us closer you're drawing us closer Lord God I thank you that your people are a people that will glorify you in Jesus name we glorify you God 
We glorify you in our, in our church, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord, in our work. But, Lord God, most of, most of all, we glorify you in our house. Lord God, in our personal lives, we glorify you. We glorify you in, in that we seek your face. And we're not seeking just what you can do for us. But, Lord God, we're seeking the heart of God. We're seeking the purpose of God. We're seeking you, Lord God, in every area of our lives. Not our own will. Not our own plans. Not our own things that, that we even think are God plans. I thank you, God. You make clear what's your plans and what's, what's different from that that uh, we think is our plans. Lord God, we thank you that we hear your voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. I thank you that <clears throat> that's a promise, Lord God. You promise that your sheep do hear your voice. We are your sheep, Lord God. We're the sheep of your pasture. And I thank you, God, that we hear your voice in Jesus' name. I thank you that we are fine-tuned to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. I thank you, Lord God, we no longer are yielding to, to our own flesh, to our own will, to our own understanding. We are yielding to the understanding of what your word shows us, Lord God, by the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you that we are yielded to everything that you have for us, Lord God, not our own will, not our own way. I thank you that circumstances come in line right now in Jesus' name. Every circumstance that has uh, come to defeat us or cause us to bow our knee, I break the power of that, that demonic spirit in Jesus' name. That spirit that would cause to, uh, try to cause us to bow. I break the power of that in Jesus' name. The only one we're going to bow to is the Lord God Almighty. I thank you that we're not going to bow to circumstance. We're not going to bow to fear. We're not going to bow to the works of the devil. We're not going to bow to the works of man. We're not going to bow to what the world says. We bow to the Most High God in Jesus' name. We bow our heart. We bow our mind. We bow our bodies, Lord God, in Jesus' name to you. And we will not allow all of these other things in. God, I thank you that you strengthen us with might in the inner man in Jesus' name. That we are mighty through God. We are mighty through God. I thank you that we are mighty, Lord God, and we will not allow these things to have their way. I thank you, Father, that we become mighty in you when we seek you you when we uh, run after you Lord God I thank you that we continue to do that cause us to be hungry and thirsty after you God in Jesus name after your word after your righteousness after the things of God so that we can glorify you with every part of our life God we love you and we thank you <clears throat> there are those that are phys uh, facing some physical things right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for a move of the Spirit of God to heal and to deliver in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that the word that has uh, been sown in, in their hearts, Lord God, would rise up in power within them and would defeat every plan of the enemy to bring sickness or to bring disease. I break the power of that in Jesus' name. Sickness and disease, you have no place. Our days are in the hands of the Lord, not in the hands of the enemy, not in the hands of disease or sickness, not in the hands of doctors, but our, our life is in the hands of Almighty God. I thank you that our days, Lord God, are in your hands in Jesus' name. And I thank you that anything else that would try to come against what your plan is for our life, it is defeated in Jesus' name. It is cut off in Jesus' name. I thank you that we receive strength in our bodies, strength in our minds, strength in our spirit, Lord God. And I thank you that we rise up today in Jesus' name to be what you have called us to be. A church that glorifies you. Hallelujah. People that glorifies you. In Jesus name. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap for that. Thank you Jesus. I found this prayer. I don't remember where I got it. Uh, but it's a good outline of a prayer. And I want to pray it. <clears throat> Y'all can just follow along. Father I pray. The prayer of dedication. Of consecration and submission today in every area of my life. I belong to you. I'll go where you want me to go and do what you want me to do. Not my will, but yours be done. Thank you, Father, that you work in me both to will and to do your good pleasure. You have a good plan for my life, a plan of peace and of joy. Father, what you want... <clears throat> 
What you want and what you desire is what I want. Who wants that today? Amen. Father, what you want and what you desire is what I want. That is what I desire. Not my will, but your will for my life. Every day. Not my own way. Not the way of the flesh, but the way of the Spirit. Your will, your plan, your way. Your will, your plan, your way. Father, I dedicate every part of my life to you. You have a plan for me in every arena of my life. Thank you for the joy of obedience. I will obey you with joy. Father, I want to have the spirit of obedience in my life. Not rebellion or pride, not resistance or hard-heartedness, or hard but a soft, sensitive heart that is willing to do anything for you. I rebuke rebellion and stubbornness in Jesus' name. I say before your presence that I am willing to do anything you want me to do. No matter what man says, no matter what the world says, you have found a willing person. Uh, you have found an obedient person. Father, I will do what you say all the way, just the way you say it, no more and no less, and with joy. Thank you for the spirit of faith and the spirit of obedience. I thank you that your will for my life will be fulfilled to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. God is good. He is faithful. And we're going to go forth and glorify God. Amen. Amen.